What's going on, YouTube fam? This your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story and all the details in the case. If you're new to the fam, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future uploads. Let's get right into the story. Revenge. Some people feel as though if something happens to them or they people, they have to get some get back. It's really a common thing. An eye for an eye. I used to subscribe to this behavior as well, but I soon realized it just seems to keep going. It's a never ending cycle. And when groups or people are thirsty for retaliation, it often leads to premature actions, leaving the wrong people hurt. For example, a person might see their so-called op in the car with his kids and be so ready to catch him, the person who has the drop will shoot up the car, not even thinking twice. Like, yo, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that because his kids in the whip. And when his gang's involved, the politics sometimes goes so deep, the target might have a green light on them, meaning no matter where or when, if the opposite side spots them, it's on sight. Not thinking it could be innocent people around that doesn't know anyone involved. And since bullets have no name, they could easily be hit. All because somebody want to get back. If you go all the way back, even to the earlier days of gang wars or beefs, and follow the trail of what started the beef, it's usually because one side did something to the other side. Now they have been going back and forth for generations. Families suffer, fathers die, then their sons grow up wanting to get back as well and become hitters themselves. Then they get hit. And the cycle just keeps repeating itself. It's common sense. It's a well-planned genocide. And on this episode of Hood Tales, I will be taking it to Columbus, Ohio to discuss a case involving an alleged gang war that cost a seven-year-old boy his life just for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. According to sources, on March 4th, 2016, Miss Judith Huntley headed to the Express Market convenience store on East 5th Avenue in Columbus. And the car with her at the time was a 19-year-old man we will call Ray and another man we will call Kay. Also at the time, her seven-year-old son, Deontay Fisher, and her two other younger kids. The mother was there to pay her cell phone bill. Judith and Kay would exit the vehicle and enter the store, leaving Ray and her kids in the vehicle. Not long after, out of nowhere, gunfire erupted and was aimed at Judith's car. The mother was still in the store when multiple shots went through the car, hitting Ray. A bullet also grazed her five-year-old son and glass fragments went everywhere. As the shot stopped, Judith and Kay ran out to see what happened. When the mother noticed her seven-year-old Deontay not moving and bleeding from his head. As witnesses called police, the mother rode with her kids to Nationwide Children's Hospital where they were treated. But unfortunately, seven-year-old Deontay would not survive. It was determined the young man was shot in the head. Judith was devastated and she didn't know what was the cause of all this. But allegedly, Ray, who was being treated at another local hospital, told police he knew the shooter. It was at the time, 18-year-old Martarius Grace. Ray said he recognized the man by his tattoos. And as police started investigating, it was quickly determined that the shooting was gang related. Allegedly, Maltarius was affiliated with a local Crip fraction called ACG or Atchison Crip Gangsters and also went by the nickname Pan or Man Down. It was also alleged that Ray and Kay were members of a rival gang called the Milo Grogan Boys and the streets were claiming that Kay was responsible for killing the younger sister of an ACG member named Capone and that's how the beef kept getting worse. Talking to local business owners, authorities realized an auto body shop located right across the street from the express market had cameras. And also the owner was in the shop the afternoon of the shooting. The owner stated he walked to the window after hearing gunshots and saw an individual in a red hoodie run around the corner to a white Nissan truck. City cameras also caught the same truck circling the express market 
the same day and time Judith pulled up. Police located the truck who belonged to an alleged ACG member's sister called T-Body. The truck was impounded and searched for evidence. With all the information, a warrant was soon put out for Martarius and he was arrested the same day of the shooting and given a $2 million bail. Charged with two counts of aggravated murder, three counts of attempted murder, one count of participating in a criminal gang, and one count of felonious assault. As he was awaiting trial, allegedly man down, called home from the jail phone, where he referred to himself by that name. Also telling the young lady he was talking to to tell T-Body to get rid of the truck before stating he didn't do the shooting. But if he did get time for it, he would state exactly why, because of the killing of Capone's sister. And then he stated that's the reason he did not care if other kids got hit. During arraignment, Miss Judith and family stated that it was a coward act and they wished police would have shot Martarius instead of arresting him, as the young mother was traumatized for losing her son to street beef. Once the case went to trial, the state presented key witnesses, including Ray, who was shot in the car that day. The young man stated he knew it was man down because of his tattoos. The auto shop owner also testified, but the most unexpected witness was an alleged ACG member we will call Jay. He told the court the day of the shooting, he was chilling outside by man down's house. Jay stated he saw the white truck parked then he saw four members, including Man Down, get into the vehicle. Then later that day, Jay went to an ACG hangout where members were at, all politicking. When he alleged he saw Man Down, who was wearing different clothes. Then Man Down allegedly told him he saw Ray and Kay and tore the car up they were in, referring to shooting up the whip. With the testimonies and recorded jail calls, the court found Martarius guilty all charges and he was sentenced to life plus 65 years in prison he quickly appealed the case stating jay was trying to get a deal on his own federal charges and that his tattoos including the k was common in the columbus streets but his sentence would be upheld rest in peace to deontay i send my prayers and deepest condolences to his family definitely his mother judith i can't imagine her pain and trauma rushing her seven-year-old and other children to the local hospital because of gunshot wounds. More of this story, gang beef and street wars don't only affect the people involved, but the whole community, taking our babies, elders, and innocent people because everybody is trying to catch their so-called ops. When the real ops, the police, judges, people that come into the community and bleed it, sit back and laugh at the genocide we cause on each other. When we realize we are stronger together, maybe things will change. And to then, we gotta succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tale. Man, it's a messed up story. Rest in peace, Deontay. You know, at the time of this case, even though it was a few years back, it was a lot of stuff going on in Columbus. As I was doing my research, a lot of kids had got hit. A five-year-old had got hit. You feel me? Another kid had got hit, and it was all alleged gang retaliation. You know, I'm going to do another story on another episode of Hood Tales about a man that was riding with his nephew, taking him to play basketball, when allegedly the man seen his ops and started shooting, and the bullet hit his nephew. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy, man. You know what I mean? Like, the gang stuff, like I said, you feel me? It's an eye for an eye. But at the end of the day, it's genocide. You know, we got switches on these guns now. Don't nobody never question where it come from. You got guns that shoot 60, 70 rounds in seconds. You know, they want us to just wipe each other out, man. But, you know, we got to wake up and be smarter. You know, you got to beat the system. At the end of the day, they don't care. Like I say, the judge winning, the jail's winning, you know, the graveyard, the funeral home winning. You know, we losing. It might seem like you winning whatever group you with, how many bodies y'all got. But y'all really losing, man. But y'all already know, man, I appreciate you if you made it to the end of this video, fam. This your boy Tony two times. This is another episode of Hood Tales. Leave your comments below. It's all love, fam. I'm out.